Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are slap bang in the middle of galaxy season. So naturally, I have put the wide field telescope on my mount and I'm gonna go after a nebula target, NGC 7822. Why have I decided to put the wide field telescope on and photograph a nebula when we're slap bang in the middle of galaxy season? Well, the main reason is because of that, the moon. So the moon is up all night long and it is a 98% moon so nearly a full moon and is just causing so much light pollution that I'm really struggling with galaxies and the LRGB filters um, or the one-shot color camera so instead I thought I'd switch to narrowband and I found a target which is quite high up in Cepheus um, constellation Cepheus NGC 7822 looks like a fantastic target really quite a large target I can only just fit this in frame with the 400 millimeter scope um, but shooting those narrow band filters will allow me to to capture some good usable data hopefully um, without having to worry about the light pollution from the moon so that's the plan that's why I've decided to switch back to the wide field scope so I'll just quickly show you what I'm actually sh shooting with tonight Okay, so this is my setup for tonight. I have the Askar 400 millimeter telescope, 400 millimeter focal length f5.6. I've got the Antlia SHO um, filters in the seven position filter wheel. I have the 2600 mono camera, the ASI 2600 mono. Got the ZWO focuser and the ASI Air, which is controlling everything. Up top, I've got the 120 mini and the F4 guide scope, which is uh, going to be my guiding camera tonight. All of this is sat on top of the CEM60 mount. So I absolutely love using this rig. It is so easy to grab, so quick to set up, and it just works flawlessly. So I'm quite excited to be using it again. I'm gonna try and go for the HA, the S2, and the O3 tonight. Even though there's a 98% moon, I'm gonna go after some O3 data. Now I don't normally do that, but I don't have any clear nights forecast for the next week or so. Um, so I want to try and finish an image off in one night. So wish me luck. Hopefully that moon does not wash out the O3 uh, data too much, um, but I will wait and see on that. Okay, so just before I start to capture some data, I wanted to show you how I plan to frame this target. So I'm in the website telescopius.com, fantastic website, I haven't used it before. Um, I'm in the telescope simulator tool um, and here you can add in all of your details. So I have the ASCAR 400 telescope put in there, I have the ASI 2600 mono and this will show you what the frame would look like. So if I didn't rotate my camera this is what it would look like um, for my framing. So what I plan to do is actually rotate the camera a little bit so I don't cut off any of this detail um, around the top. So I'm going to uh, simulate that in here. And this is how I'm hoping to try and frame the, uh, the, the nebula tonight. So by rotating the camera, you can see that I'm capturing more of the detail up here. I'm definitely getting all of this um, sort of high signal um, in there. I'm not gonna be cutting off anything um, down the bottom of the image. So that's how I plan to frame the target. I do need to spend a bit of time actually framing it and make sure I get the rotation of the camera correct. But I think doing this is always um, a useful exercise to see what it would look like um, when you do get outside and you can kind of have an image in mind rather than just uh, having some trial and error on the night. This really does help. So I would highly recommend telescopius.com. Okay, my plan to capture the data all on one night did not go according to plan, but I did get a surprise clear night a couple of nights later. So all of the data you see here was taken around the full moon, and I'm actually really happy with it considering there was such a bright moon up. Um, so the HA data, I managed to capture 23 seven minutes subs so just over two and a half hours of the HA and I'm really happy with this lots of detail um, 
shooting with the HA filter when there's a bright moon out doesn't really affect the data too much. So even though there was 100% moon when I captured this, um, it still looks pretty good to me and I'm pleased with the framing as well. The O3, um, I managed to capture 3 hours 40 minutes, so 31 7 minute sub exposures. And the O3 was impacted by the moon, as you can see, there is quite a big gradient. So even though I was shooting away from the moon, um, you can see there was a big gradient coming in here. And the data is probably, or is definitely more washed out than I would have got if I shot on a moonless night. But still just about usable. It did take a bit of editing to, um, to actually pull this image together. But once I combined the uh, the data, once I did some dynamic background extraction, it's actually the data was actually fairly usable. So I'm quite happy with that. The S2, um, I managed to capture 32 seven minute subs, so three hours, 44 minutes. And again, I don't think that this was impacted that much by the moon. Obviously I would have got more detail if the moon wasn't there. Um, but yeah, fairly happy with this. I think there's, uh, there was quite a bit of detail in the, the uh, bright sections of the nebula um, and the outer sections as well. So yeah, quite happy with the, the, the data overall. Um, so I have edited this. Um, a few people have asked me recently if I could put up an editing tutorial. Um, I don't think I'm the best or the most knowledgeable person um, of how to edit data in Pick Insight. So maybe I will do that in the future. But for now, there are far better tutorials out there. But I will show you the final image now. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please um, let me know if you like the image. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.